Welcome to episode three in this four part series on mapping and route planning for adventure bike riders. Um, if you haven't already seen the previous videos, um, I'll put a link here in the top left to the playlist where you can actually um, have a look at videos one and two. In this video, we're really gonna get into the guts of it. This is probably the, the most important video of the four. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna um, uh, take some, some routes and waypoints that have been created on the uh, using Gaia GPS, bring them into base camp, just fix up the, the awful format that Gaia uses. We're gonna send them to the GPS unit. Um, we're then going to display them correctly on the GPS unit and we'll actually ride. I'll ride um, both and I'll show you navigation through tracks and I'll also show you navigation via routes through turn by turn. And I'll also show you how to use um, Garmin Explore to actually display waypoints onto the GPS. So let's start in Gaia. And I created um, a special file for us. Uh, and I'll turn it on here. It's called Sample Local Navigation. And if we now, zoom, you can see waypoints appeared here. And if I now zoom in to this area, you'll see that I've actually um, created a couple of different uh, assets. So if we go into this, I've got a waypoints folder and you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, five waypoints here. So I've sort of got home base, I've got a, um, a marker for the end of day one's ride. Then I've actually highlighted three potential campsites just in local parks. And then I've created a route for day two. So the pink route's day two, and then the cyan route is day one. So now that we've got that, and which again, just to sort of help visualize it, if we just go to say like the watercolor layer, it might make it a bit easier. So again, just taking away some of the clutter, you can see cyan line in the parks. I've got one, two, three campsites, a home base, a starting point, uh, a finish point for day one. And then I've just, just made a couple of random routes in the neighborhood. So let's, um, let's export them now. Again, because there's two different routes here, I can't actually do it all in one go. So I can't just click on the overview folder and say export GPX because I'll show you what happens. Okay, so now this, this file has been downloaded. If I go to Garmin Basecamp now, and let's, let's come in here, I'll go Australian Rides, New South Wales, um, and let's create a new list. So I right click and say new list. I'll say um, local um, ride for navigation demo. Okay, and then if I drag, oops. So, so now if I, so if I minimize that window, so now if I drag that onto here, I get an error. Um, it says that it's not a valid GPX file and could not be opened. And that's because for some reason, even though GPX files can handle multiple routes, the way Gaia does it, it doesn't like it. Um, and I suspect it's because of the formatting of, the, um, of those route files. So instead, I'm gonna click into the items. I'm gonna export my waypoints. So I can, I can click on my waypoints folder, go overview and say export GPX. Now all of those waypoints will be in a file called waypoints. And then if I go back a level, and then now I can do day one route. So export GPX back into my folder, day two route, export GPX. Okay, so there's my three files, waypoints, day one, day two. So let's minimize that a little bit and move them across. So now if I grab my my waypoints folder, my waypoints file, there it is, and I drag that into here. There's all my waypoints that have popped in. I'll get my day one route and drag it in, and my day two route and drag that in. So now in Basecam, uh, you know, it doesn't take long to sort of get them all there. But now if I go sample local right, I've got these two routes and then I've got one, two, three, four, five waypoints. Now remember the routes are coming out of 
guy are awful, so I'm just going to convert them to tracks. So I highlight it, right click, and just say create track from route. Same with this one, right click, create track from route. Okay, so now you can see it's got little footprints there, so they're real tracks and they'll appear in the right place. And I'll delete those awful Frankenstein files. Okay, so, um, so what I've got now, if I double click on say my day one route, it's brought it up in Basecamp. Now I'm just going to, um, if I double click on it, I'm just gonna set the color. So I'm gonna make that, um, uh, let's, let's make that um, cyan. Okay, and then the second one, I'm gonna make that a color as well. I'm not gonna make it magenta though, because, uh, and you'll see why later on. So I'm gonna make that um, bright red. Okay, that should do. Okay, so, so you can see if I highlight, right, there's that clearly there's my day one track and there's my day two track. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna, in the demo, in the demo when I ride it, I'm gonna ride this as a track and I'm going to ride this as a turn by turn route. So I now need to make um, make a route out of the, that day two. Now, I know that some people sort of say they come in here and they right click and they say create a route from track. Um, let's, uh, okay, so it's actually, in fact, it just crashed. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll do that again. Um, Okay, so I don't know why why Basecamp crashed, um, but I, I I don't use those automatic route creations. A because it's actually if you know how to create the routes manually, it's better, um, and you can you you know I, I just think you've got more control over it. You can drop waypoints in more appropriate places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, Let's let's now manually create that. So I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to come in here now. Actually, let, let me just. Okay. So just to make this a bit bit easier, I'm right now. My waypoints will come in as these little dots. So I'm going to change them a little bit. So let's see. Willoughby Park was my sort of finish line. So of day one. So I'm just going to set highlight it. Say get info. Choose your icon and. Let's, I'm just going to pick up the sister of flag, green flag. Um, then the home over there was was um, home, so I'm going to say get info and choose a different waypoint there. And let's choose oh, there it is, home. Okay, and then these other three, these are my potential campsites for the night. So I'm going to highlight them, get info, choose. Uh, and choose campsite. Okay, so now I've got my waypoints all clearly identified. Let's actually create the route. So I, I come up here to my um, creation tools and I choose create a route. I'm using the city navigator map. I'm going motorcycling, start point. So I'll make my start point here, Willoughby Park. Okay, and I'll make my end point for this is going to be home. And I'll say go. Okay, so now you can see that the route that it's created is, is not the one I want to do. So I want to follow that track. So I'm going to just choose my arrow, make sure my route is selected. And then I can just start, oops, start correcting it. Sometimes Basecamp does that. It's just, it's one of the vagaries, there we go, of Basecamp UI. Okay, so that's half corrected it. Bring that up to there. And then bring that up to there. Okay, and oh. Actually, you know what I did? I modified, I accidentally modified my track. So I'm just going to undo that. Yeah, I got my track selected, not my route. So I've got to select my route and then arrow tool. 
See, so it's jumped off the route on the track for some reason. That's got it. And then from here, and from here. Okay, so now my route matches my track. That's the perfect match. Okay, so now these, uh, I'm now ready to send all of this information to my GPS. So I'm gonna go and grab my GPS and plug it into the computer. Okay, so now my, my GPS units just appeared here, and you probably saw those swirling arrows. So the first thing it does is it synchronizes with Basecamp. Um, but now in this top pane up here, I've got, I've, I can see my Zumo, I can see which maps are installed. And um, so I can see my topo active map. Uh, and if I select that now, it'll actually switch over to the topo map and display that. Now you can see if the topo, if the maps are not installed on your computer, it's actually quite slow. So if I scroll, for example, if I move this window, you can see it actually takes time for that map data to come through. So if you are going to work with Basecamp, it's pretty important um, to actually install the maps on your computer. Um, so that you're working off them from the hard drive. So if I now go back to uh, the one on my hard drive, you can see this, it's much faster, much more responsive. Um, okay, so let's, now that we've got the GPS um, connected, I can go back to, um, back to, so here I've got a route, two tracks and five waypoints. Now I can basically get, send them all to the GPS in one go. So I just have to highlight them all. So if I select it all like that, and then I can go on to transfer, um, and I say send local ride to device. It then says, okay, I'm gonna send to your Zumo XT. I'm gonna send routes, I'm gonna send tracks, and I'm gonna send waypoints. Okay, so, and I'll say, yes, please send all of that and it only takes a second, it says transfer complete. So at that point, um, I can now, um, I'm finished with Basecamp, Every, everything I need, well, not quite everything I need, but most of the things I need are on my GPS. So let's, let's now bring up the GPS and have a quick look at it. Okay, so the Garmin's found um, the new route to import, so I'll say yes. It says, which ones do you want to import? There's only one, so I will say import that. That is now in. So all of those assets are now in the Zumo. And if you want to check that, let's check the waypoints first. So if I go where to, favorites, here are the um, the waypoints, okay? So I can see my, my um, uh, three campsites and then home. And then if I go, um, if I go back to my main apps, I can go into my tracks, and there's my two tracks, day one and day two route. And then if I wanna have a look at um, my trips, save trips, there's my, there's my trip. So all my assets are now in my Zumo. So if we have a look at the map now, view map. Okay, so you can actually see, um, the, the two tracks are actually being displayed on the map, okay? So they're kind of ready for navigation. And the reason, I think, I don't know whether Garmin has actually changed it in the software version or whether it's because I started using Explore recently, but it used to be that, that if I wanted to display the tracks, I had to come in explicitly and say tracks, and I had to choose the track I wanted to display, choose the spanner, and then it would actually say show on um, map. It doesn't do that anymore. And I think because I've started using Explore, I've now got this co um, collections option. And so I have chosen, if you go back to your map settings, okay, and you choose maps and vehicle, 
and then um, map layers, all right? So th this is where I can actually say, which collections do I want to display on the map? And right now I've got unorganized checked. So if I uncheck that and come back to my maps, okay, you can see my tracks have gone. So, so if you have not used Explore, it's probably going to be, you know, you set them track by track. But once you use Explore, then it's kind of works with this whole thing of collections. And if you want your tracks to display, you just say unorganized tracks to come to display and then they'll be there. So let's set that back again. So if I say settings, map and vehicle, layers, collections, unorganized now um, because those because I didn't organize those maps into um, those tracks into specific collections now they will display properly okay um, so there you go um, and remember I've got two different modes on this so if I go back let's just see if I change that to off-road um, and then view my map yeah, good. Okay, so that so that's consistent on both. Whether I'm in off-road mode or on-road mode, I'm seeing both those tracks. So let's have a quick look at the trip or the route. Um, so under apps, trip planner. Okay, so it's going to be in saved trips. I've only got one. Uh, so here are the sort of the, my waypoints and my shaping waypoints. So. I'm now gonna, I always just have a quick look at the map to make sure that it looks, um, you know, how it should. If it looks funky or it looks weird, um, the best way of fixing that is just come back to the spanner and then on route preferences, if you know, just, just toggle this, like if it's on faster time, you might wanna just go to shorter distance and that forces it to recalculate um, and then it should that should fix any weirdness that you get. So it all looks good. Okay, so I'm now ready to, to um, navigate that route. So I could then say, where, I, where do you want to, I'll go into the start point. And it's now calculating um, the route for me. And it's ready to go. Okay, so it's now, it's giving me turn by turn directions now. And it's going to take... Drive to highlighted route. Okay. At the end of the street, turn right. Turn right on High Street. Okay, so it's now in turn by turn and it's ready to go. I've rigged up my GoPro on a bracket so that it can actually um, watch the uh, Zumo screen as I'm riding. Okay, so now we've got the Garmin on the bike. Let's just turn it on. Okay, so the first route we're going to ride, or sorry, the first track we're going to ride is the track. So, um, and I'm in off-road mode, so it's got my topographic map in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in. Okay. And I'm going to be following this blue track. Now I'm going to start off and I'm going to put it in um, track up mode. So if I come back, settings, uh, oops, map and vehicle. Um, so I'm going to start off with track up, view map, okay, and let's go and follow that track to our first waypoint. Okay, so I can see it's telling me to turn right. turn right again so you can see with track up it's pretty easy to follow you just um, your the tracks always heading up north now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stop it I'm gonna change it into um, north up okay so I'm gonna just change that now and we'll have a look at north up north up Okay, so now you can see I've got north at the top of the screen. But 
but I can clearly see that I'm actually heading east. You can see it's pretty easy to um, see the screen. It's very easy to navigate with the, um, the screen of the Zumo compared to a phone. One thing to say, normally what I would do is if I was um, riding an adventure, I'd actually put the track recorder on. So I'll just turn that on now. Track, start recorder. Okay. Now, as I ride, it should leave a red, a very clear red trail on the map. So I can see where I've been. Okay, so I'm coming now to my waypoint. Okay, so I'm actually at my first waypoint. So let's say that, let's just say that I'm here for the night now, I need to find a place to camp. If I zoom out, I can have a look at, I can see my campsites on the map. All right, so here's my three options. Um, and so I'm gonna pick, um, I'm gonna pick, let's go, I'll go to this one here. So if I tap the waypoint, butt park campsite, and I can say go, and now it'll give me turn by turn to the campsite. So it's, it's quite nice to help me find it. Okay. I need to do a U-turn. And there is, and in there is my, my little uh, campsite. Okay, so I've now finished day one and I'm now, um, I'm now uh, found my campsite for the night. So let's say it's, say it's day two. And for day two, I wanna ride um, the route. Okay, so I'm gonna go apps, trip planner, save trips, Willoughby park to home, go. And I'm gonna start from Willoughby Park. I wanna start from the beginning. Okay, it shows me the map, it looks good. So I'll say start. Okay, so now it's calculating and I'm gonna get through turn by turn. Okay. And you can see the red track is kind of invisible, okay? I, I can't see the red track, it's hidden underneath the, my turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Okay, now, what's interesting here is and one of the reasons why I do like to have the track shown is you can see the navig what the navigation's done here. It's actually taking me out to my waypoint on Laurel Street there, but then it's actually, it wants to bring me back to the shortest route to go up here. So I'm gonna ignore, ignore the turn by turn, uh, head out to my waypoint, and I can see my track makes it very, very clear on what my intended route was. And you'll see that as I turn right onto Laurel, it should actually just recalculate and the, um, the GPS should follow an update. Actually,
That's interesting. The GPS crashed for some reason. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Okay, so let's assume, let's assume that there's a detour here and I cannot continue to go ahead. Um, I, can, I can start looking at, actually let's make sure. Off-route recalculation automatic. Okay. So I'm going to do a U-turn. I'm going to head down here and the system should do a recalculation. Okay. So it's done a recalculation, so I'm clearly off route. And now if I zoom out, the track lets me see what's going on and where I want to go. I'm actually going to go right here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just deliberately sort of going off piece. So I'm assuming that there's some sort of detour or road closure and I'm having to um, veer my way around it. And, uh, and then I'm going to look to sort of re-establish and get back on my route. So this is a good example where the um, the turn by turn is kind of it's trying to take me back into that waypoint there, which I don't want to go. So if I hit this little button at the top, I can say skip waypoint, and it asks me, do I want to skip this? Yes. And now it'll recalculate and sort of get me back on route. And again, because I've got my track sort of burnt in, I can always see where it is I meant to come. Actually, one of the things that's a little bit confusing is the I made the track red, which is actually not a very smart colour to make it because because I've turned my track recorder on. The track recorder um, it creates a red trail of where you've been, so um, so that kind of is a little bit confusing. But hopefully, you get the gist. Okay, so I got to go right here. I hope you found this episode useful. Um, we really got into the guts of it in this one and looked at how we bring uh, GPX files into the Zumo, um, where we can find them, how to make sure they're displaying properly, and then we went riding. Um, I, I rode tracks using North Up and also um, Track Up. Uh, again, I think Track Up is probably easier if you're sort of um, you know, new to following tracks. But I do think that riding with um, North Up will give you much better spatial awareness. You know, when I'm out in the trail, I kind of just know where I am on the trail that I've designed. Um, and that's because I understand when I'm riding North, South, East, West, etc. cetera. Um, and just to reiterate, when I'm navigating off-road, it's almost always using tracks. I never try to create routes. And that's, there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. Sometimes, um, the, the trails just don't exist on the map, um, or I'm following, you know, GPX tracks, which are more like single track. Uh, it's just too unreliable to try to get turn by turn off-road. So um, if you get used to following tracks, you'll find it's just, it's really simple, it's really reliable, and you kind of can't go wrong following tracks. Um, anyway, in the next episode, which is the final episode in this series, I'm going to just take you through a whole bunch of tips and tricks, um, some administrative tasks, and I'll also have a look at um, both Google Earth and I'm going to look at um, Garmin Explore and how I set that up so that it works well with my um, InReach device and allows others to really follow my journey as I ride. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed it.